We are painting the spring birch tree project today and I am pumped about it because I'm obsessed with these colors right now. I just love the like pale pastel -y pinks and blues with like a hit of the vibrant pink and it makes such a beautiful background and then the yellows and blues and stuff in the leaves of the trees. Oh, I'm just craving spring, I guess. Let's get started. All right, let's open these boxes and see what we have inside the kit for the spring birch trees. So as usual, we have our beautiful colorful party on the inside of the box. If you haven't um, done one of our kits yet, you may want to check out the YouTube video on how to build your box into an easel. It looks something like this. Super easy peasy and um, it's helpful if you want to work on an outbreak surface or you can work flat, whatever works for you. Um, we always have a visual step-by-step -step of the project in case you need to refer to that. And in these little guys, you'll find all your special items. So this one I have here is our tools we need for the project. In this kit, you will have a small foam dabber and then the little teeny tiny polka dotter. And two different angled brushes. One will be a thicker angled brush and one will be a more detailed tiny angle brush. And that's really all we need to make this. As for the colors, there's a beautiful palette on this one. So um, the background, we're gonna use a pale blue color and lots of white. White's our best friend in this pool painting. Um, a nice pastel pink, a more vibrant pink, kind of like a cotton candy color, a nice cool gray, and a mama. A beautiful bright spring green that I love with a nice soft yellow for double dipping. And then a more vibrant blue for the shady and the lace. So let's get going on this project. I can't wait to do it again. Just to note, if it is a little tricky to get your canvas out of your box, don't worry, it's normal for it to be a little tricky, okay? It's in there nice and snug so that for shipping purposes, it gets to you safely and nothing spills. So note that it's normal for it to be a little tricky and just carefully nudge it up as you go. For the background of this painting, you're going to need the yellow foam um, polka dotter dabber tool. And color-wise, we'll be using the blue, the pale pink, some of the vibrant pink, and white. So go ahead and pour some of those colors into your palette. We're gonna use the white for the trees too, so just pour a little bit of it in for now. We can always add to it. Some white and some blue. This is a good order to do them in because we're gonna be using them in this order. Some of the pale pink. some of the brighter cotton candy pink. We don't need as much of that one unless you love it and you want to make it brighter. You can totally do that too. And then the technique we use in the background is really fun. So take your dabber, dip it in the blue first, and then double dip a little bit in the white so it will be something like that. And starting at the top of your of your canvas, you're just gonna push down. You can sometimes dab. There's a few techniques for knees. Sometimes you can dab. Sometimes you can push down and spin a little bit. We're really just adding a bit of texture. And then sometimes you can kind of mix in both. So I'm kind of like dabbing and spinning. Sometimes I leave even a little bit of the canvas show through because the white on it looks really nice too. So I'm sort of just like dabbing and half spinning as I go. You can see it sort of makes this like 
whimsical cloud texture. Don't think of it like it has to be a cloud though, just like this fluffy sort of texture. Some areas will have like more of the paint showing. You can see where there's darker values of blue in there and then some of them will be a bit lighter. That is cool and some will be somewhere in the middle. And you're just working your way with the blue and the white across your canvas and then down, maybe about a third of the way down in those two colors. Sometimes I'm dabbing, sometimes I'm kind of swirling, sometimes I'm doing a bit of both. So I'm like dabbing and swirling. You can kind of see my action in my wrist. And as the paint kind of wears off of your paintbrush, that's cool. Kind of let it happen and then leave, you can leave little pockets of the white showing through as I was saying, and then it gets lighter as you have less paint on your paintbrush. So it's really adding a ton of different values of blue and adding different textures in there as well. And it really makes a fun, playful background. Mm -hmm. Now, as we progress down the canvas, we're gonna do the same technique. So now that your wrist is all into the action of it, it's pretty easy to do. You're gonna dip in the blue and then double dip a teeny bit into the pink whenever you wanna start transitioning. Maybe even dab it, dab it a bit off on your palette or on a paper towel before you get going. And that same thing's gonna happen. You're gonna just dab and twist. Now if, see this one's kind of looking a little dark for me, if that's happening, no big deal, dip a little bit in your white and then go over and soften it and sort of blend it out. So you should be getting some purpley tones in here, some blue tones in here, some pink tones. What you don't want is just a solid like mush of it all together. So it's just one color. You want to see little playful pink spots peeking out and blue spots and white spots and then some purple spots of where they mixed, some softer spots with the texture, and then some more like dabby looking spots. I'm just double, I'm actually just, I just triple dipped. <laughs> I have a blue and white and pink on my dabber, and I'm just gonna keep going, da, da, da. Sometimes you could do like little swirls like this. I'm barely pushing too. If I'm trying to do some blending, you don't have to push really hard, just sort of less paint and soft dabbing. It goes a long way. And then the next time I dip, once I have sort of a, not a row, you don't want it to look like a row. You can have the odd little pink up here too if it helps to sort of blend it. But once you have a section that has a bit of blue and pink in it, then you'll merge down to more pinks in the bottom half of the canvas. Again, it'll have purple tones in there and always dipping in white to help blend. Ooh, that was really bright, but that's okay. I can blend that out in a minute. I'm just gonna get most of my paint off of my brush before I revisit that spot over here where it's like, see how it's brighter? It's all good. Just make sure you sort of blend some off before you try to calm that down. So you want a dry brush. And as you're, as you're um, doing your painting, you can wrap the right around. When, it, when the color hits the side of the canvas, just wrap it around your edges. Or at the end, you could paint them all if you wanted. You could paint them all black or white or pink or blue. And I'm revisiting that brighter spot now. I dipped a little tiny bit in the white. And I'm just using this paint here to kind of dip from and spread it out. The background totally looks like cotton candy. <laughs> Yummy. And there's a bit of blue still on my brush. 
and it comes out every now and then, which is kind of cute and playful, and that's fine. Don't fret about that. You don't want to wash your brush in between because um, it doesn't work as well when it's wet, I find. If you do end up having to wash it for some reason or another, make sure you really dry it out before you use it again. I'm just going to hear. Okay, and then we're going to do the bottom quarter with double dipping with the both pink values, that lighter pink and the more um, vivid pink. And same dabbing and twisting action. At some parts, I kind of took in the odd little bit of blue down here too, because it is still kind of supposed to be sky, I think. <laughs> I don't know, just, just kind of causing like a sky background. But I wanted it to kind of fade into the bright pink by the time it hits the bottom of the canvas. Running a little low on white. It's always hard to tell how much paint to put in your palette. <laughs> it's always I think better to just take a little bit and add more than pour yourself way too much and waste it. So always add more, a little bit more weight, and a little bit of the pinks. That was a triple dip and blending. You can always kind of go over it too if you see like an area that looks a little bit sort of like one tone is taking over the whole area. Like this area is really just like light pink for a bit there. So I thought, I'd, okay, well I'll throw a little bit more tones in there. And right now I barely have any paint on my brush. I'm sort of just like using whatever residue is on it. Definitely a good workout for your wrist and fingers. We are killing two birds with one stone today, an art lesson and a workout. <laughs> Dipped a little bit in the blue just to take some purple tones kind of in here a little bit. And there's no right or wrong. You just dab it and twist it until you sort of love the look of it. And when you get to the point where you're like, yeah, this looks pretty cool, stop. Because knowing when to stop is always the hardest part. And you can definitely overdo it. So make sure you kind of just keep an eye on, on it as a whole. Don't get sucked into one corner or one section too much and overwork it and worry about it. Just kind of watch the texture that you're using throughout the whole piece. So there is my fun little playful cloudy sunset -y, or maybe a sunrise <laughs> background. You're going to need your background to dry so it's a good time for a little break or um, and or make sure you wash your foam brush out at this point especially if you want to keep it for another project. It's a great little tool to use really squeeze it out when you're washing it and then maybe just dab it on a paper towel and lay it flat to dry. And we can continue on as soon as the background's dry. If you're super eager to keep going, a hair dryer is your best friend. So you can get that out and be done in 30 seconds. The next step, we're gonna need the white and the bigger of the angle brushes. So the uh, thicker one, and we're gonna get started on the first layer of our birch tree. I'm just adding a little bit of the white in the palette, topping up my white. If your white got gunky from the background, if it has like blues and pinks mixed in, feel free to, use to like do a new spot on your palette. So I took the tip of my brush into the white paint, and I'm gonna just outline my trees. So I'm going to start with the trees that are the smaller trees on the left hand side of the canvas and I'm going to hold the brush with the angle point of the brush upwards and just on the edge of the brush and then pull away from the angle and I'm outlining the trees. So I'm going to do a line all the way from the top to the bottom 
as one edge of the tree and then another one next to it as the other edge of the tree. When you're doing these, these, are, these trees are a bit in the distance, so they're gonna be a little bit skinnier than our foreground tree. Mine are maybe about the width of, a little bit wider than the width of my brush, I would say. And they won't have to be perfect lines. They're the trees, it's nature, and it actually seems more realistic if they're not perfect lines. Uh, the one hint I would give you when you're making trees, though, is the base of a tree is always a little bit bigger and then it gets a little bit narrower as it goes up. And that rule applies as well once we get into branches, when the branch is closer to the tree, it's gonna be thicker, and as it gets away from the tree, it will get thinner. And then you can just fill it in. The white's probably gonna take a couple coats to fill in. Hard to say, maybe one good coat, but we're adding gray too, so. It doesn't have to fill in to a complete solid. And a little bit of pink on the birch trees actually looks pretty cute because sometimes when the birch's bark is peeled back a little bit, that layer underneath has a pink hue to it. So you can either like just fill it all in quickly going up and down, or you can start giving it that birch bark texture just by doing short horizontal pulls of your brush all the way through or down your tree, just filling it in with white. So it's just basically a big tree trunk I've got here. And then I'm gonna do one next to him again. Same idea, maybe this guy's gonna be a bit narrower at the top, and he's gonna be a bit skinnier, and he's gonna get a little bit bigger as he goes down. They can lean birch trees. They can be a little wiggly woggly, just a little bit. That's cool. They kind of just grow that way. Mm -hmm. And I kind of got them going a little bit thicker and I'm going to add to his base down here. and then fill them in. So basically you have two tree trunks placed sort of at the distance. They're a little bit thinner than our bigger tree that's going to be on the right of the canvas in the foreground. Or you can totally flip it too if you would prefer having um, your foreground tree on the opposite side of the painting. That's fun. If you see any big chunks, that's what I'm doing now, just kind of any bigger pieces, chunks of paint, just kind of going over them and spreading them out a little bit. And that way they will dry a bit faster and we can get on to the next coat easier. So this one kind of curves at the top a little bit. It's cute. See the two lines there? Boop. You have to add branches just just yet you can do your other big main trunk and then we'll do all the branches at the same time so the other guy i'm going to position him on the opposite side of the canvas and but the same idea we're going to go lines all the way up or all the way down it doesn't really matter what direction you work if you're working from top to bottom or bottom to top as long as you're always pulling away from the angle of the brush and using the edge of the brush if you push against the angle, it will make a thicker line. In this case, it wouldn't matter to you too much because we are going to be filling it in. But it's a good habit to sort of get used to because that's um, the proper way of using the, this angle brush. Otherwise, you just you might as well just have like a flat brush, which also would work in this case. I'm just holding it along the edge, which would just work just fine too. And I'm getting a little thicker as I go up, I'm sorry, a little bit thinner as I go up the tree and its base is just a bit thicker. It's thickening it up just a little bit because I want it to have a good 
a little bit of weight on the canvas. It's a little bit thinner than my original tree. That's okay. The great thing about art, it's definitely not a photocopy. <laughs> I can do the same painting over and over and they never turn out the same. And now I'm just starting to fill in. On the bigger tree, I would suggest going horizontally to fill it in, just because it already gets you going on the right texture for the bark. And it's a lot wider, so it, uh, it just helps you out. If you go vertically to fill in, um, you'll have to go over it anyway, going horizontally with the next coat. So you might as well get it going. And if the white is a little see-through, don't fret about that because, um, as I was saying before, some of the, the bark has pink showing up through it, so it will just look natural. So I've got my white all filled in. Now you want to make sure your bristles of your brush are really sharp. So if it's all like kind of fluffy and out of shape, what you're going to do is dip in your white paint, lay it on a paper towel, and then just pinch your brush and pull the brush back out. And I call that sharpening a brush. It really just like gets all your bristles to be nice and tight together and puts your brush back into shape. It's really nice when you need to do thin details to keep a sharp brush. Well, I know. <laughs> so with a nice sharp brush, I'm dipping the edge of the brush in the weight, and we're gonna start mapping out some of our branches. So on your little trees, you can just have some smaller little branches. When you're really just doing the white part closer to the tree, so when these branches kind of get thin at the end of the of the branch, it's going to be black. So just do like a few little branches sticking out. They're going to be thicker when they're closer to the tree and thinner as they get away from the tree, but you don't have to do the, the full ends of each branch. I'm just going to do a couple kind of randomly. Some can be a bit bigger, some can be a bit thinner. And we can always add little black ones um, later too if you if you feel like it needs more once we get going with leaves and things. So that guy has these guys have two branches each right now. Maybe I'll do like one more coming up this way. Okay, and we'll add the details with the black. So it looks something like this. Now I'm working on the little trees first because they are further in the distance. And any branch that comes off of our bigger tree, this big guy, um, can overlap the other ones, the other littler trees and their branches because it's closer to us, which is why it's bigger. And he's closer to us in perspective and his branch can, branches can overlap. So, little pieces of land on my camera. Sorry. Okay, so I'm gonna put a bigger branch sort of lower on this tree. And similar to how we did the branches, or sorry, the tree trunks, we're gonna do the branches the same way. So I'm pulling away from the angle. And these branches are like kind of wibbly wobbly. They don't have to be perfectly straight. See how I can kind of come out and then go top of it? That's fine. And then maybe it splits off even into like a smaller branch this way, like a letter Y shape. Maybe even has like another little guy coming off of it here. But 
nowhere to run for positioning, but you do want to make sure that it's always thicker at the, where it connects with the tree and it gets thinner the further away it gets. Goes for all your little branches that come off of branches as well. You just want to continue to make it get thinner and thinner and thinner to a point where you maybe don't have to outline, you can just use the edge of your brush. And I think this branch here is going to just come right over top of these trees. It's fine. Again, we will do the details in the book after. And I think I'm going to put another branch right up here. And this one's kind of curvy up the Again, thicker at the branch, at the tree, and thinner as the branch goes out. I'm not really copying exactly what I did on my original for positions of branches because every tree is unique and organic and you just go with what feels good. You don't have to go with exactly the same branch pattern that I have. You can if that makes you feel more comfortable or if you just really love where my branches are, feel free. I just like to go with what feels good. It's pretty similar anyway, my branch position, but it's not big like mine. Okay, so that's what I have all on the white. You can check out the um, reference page too. The second step is all your white outlines of your trees. Um, and then filled in. So th the, that picture is at this stage that we're at now. So give that a quick peek if you need some reference and we will move on to the next step. And you can also take a quick peek at your reference page. This step here, the second step, is um, the one where you should be at now. So it has all the outlining of the trees and then they're filled in in the white. Next up, we're gonna need the cool gray tone. We're gonna do some shading in the trees in the white part. And you can use that same brush and you don't have to wash it, okay? So we'll just jump right into that right away. Careful to <laughs> pour a little bit into your palette. Little clean pot. And I'm gonna double dip. So I'm using the gray, but there's already white on my brush and I might even add a little dabble of white just so that it blends as I use it. And what I'm doing with the gray is just starting to add shading. So you can kind of pull little pieces along like that. That might be a little bit dark for my liking. And if that happens, that's okay. Don't stress over it. I'm actually like pulling the gray along the one side of this tree. It's gonna be, so I'm imagining the light coming from this way. So the one side of the tree is gonna be just a little bit shadowy more shadowy than the other side. A little bit darker grays in there. Not to say you can't throw a little bit of gray in here and there to give it some extra texture. And especially underneath the um, the branch here. I'm throwing some gray too. You can really see it coming to life soon. Um, if that happens where that feels like a little bit too much, you can always add a bit of white too if you wanna like layer a bit, it calms it down a bit. I'm just going along the side of the big tree, pulling in, adding some gray. I haven't dipped a lot. You don't need to dip a lot. Less is always, always more. And when I dip, I just dip the edge of my brush. Not going all the way up the tree in the exact same pattern too. Some will have, see there's like a patch up here and then you know, a little bit where there isn't too, too much. And then another big darker patch. Just kind of working my way down the tree. Maybe a few little patchy spots in here. I'm taking a bit of paint off there. It was just a little bit dark, so I'm taking some off. And then I'm just gonna use what's left on my brush to give it a little soft, gray, hazy texture. A little bit of dry brushing. I'm not dipping anymore, I'm just using that to residue sort of to give it a little bit of like a texture okay now i am gonna dip because i have nothing left <laughs> but don't do a lot I'm dipping taking a bunch off that's my palette and then i can just like throw a little bit like wisping always doing horizontal strokes 
They can have a slight curve in them because the tree is a round object. It could have a little bit of a curve, but um, just a straight horizontal works too. You don't want to go vertical, so it makes sense for this project. Um, until you get to the branch. When you're doing the branch, those lines can go across the branch. So if your branch is um, directly horizontal, then your lines could go vertical. But you don't want to think of them going like across the branch. I'm just going to kind of break up my branch as it comes into the tree. See how I did that? Like a little line and then just pull them in here. And that's going to kind of outline the branch without uh, being completely outlined as it is. And I'm just going to throw in some shadows, a little bit on the bottoms of the branches. And I'm kind of just pulling the brush along it. I'm not doing like the whole texture when I'm just doing the little branches. And then kind of just blend that line out a bit so it doesn't feel much like a line as it's just kind of fading into the tree. Um, one thing to note here is I'm doing the big tree first this time because we want to make sure that our branches from the big tree go on top of the little tree, right? So just something to pay attention to at this point. If there's any of that crossover, you just want to make sure that that guy goes on top of. And I'll do this branch up here. Just a little bit of shade into it on the bottom where it's going to come in. I'm really just adding a bit of cross pulls for texture. I dipped a little bit in the white there just to blend it in so it had different values of gray. It's not always that same blue gray tone. Sometimes it's a bit lighter if you mix it with the white. It's going to make your birch feel a bit more realistic for it to not just have like solid colors. Every time you double dip um, and mix it and blend it and create more values and tones in there, it just makes it more realistic. Come to life and jump off the page. Just gonna top up my white for a sec. Um, so then we'll do the same thing with the other little trees. It doesn't have to be as intense, obviously, they're smaller trees, but you can still do the same effect carefully. If it's easier to switch to your smaller angle brush, you can totally do that for the smaller trees if that makes you more comfortable. Um, I'm just sharpening my bigger brush and I'm going to use the same brush. I always choose the bigger brush, just the biggest brush that I can for that task. Um, I don't know if that's because I did so many window paintings uh, in my artist career, but I paint a ton of windows for businesses and um, most of the time it's in the winter. And it gets cold and uh, I need to work quickly, so I choose a bigger brush. But in this case, you don't really have to work quickly. It's like up to you. Um, and then I'm just going to kind of go along the one side and pull some gray horizontal pulls in. It doesn't have to be all perfectly all the way down. If it gets too dark, like I feel that one just did, add light. Um, you're going to do the bottoms of your branches. Essentially, it's just the same thing we just did in smaller. Make sense. Hopefully it all makes sense. And this works as your second coat for your white too. So if there's spots where you're like, wow, you can really see the pink through, take a little bit of white or double dip it white and gray. You can fix that up. Um, but as I said, the pink actually makes sense to come through a bit. So it doesn't concern me that much. If you know me, I am a don't sweat the small stuff kind of person. So um, if I see the pinks or the blues through the trees a teeny bit, it's not going to bother me that much. I always just call it like extra shading or texture to my painting, if you can see that, because I think that we worked hard on each layer, so if it's, it comes through a bit, it's fine. And if there's ever a layer you really don't want to show, that's when you just do another coat to make it solid. Doing a little bit on the bottoms of the branches. And I'm always doing it 
sort of more on the one side. Doesn't matter what side you do as long as you commit to it. Um, so I have more of the darker tones on the right side of the trees, but um, but definitely sporadically place it a little bit on the other side too, or double dip it a little bit and add some gray tones in because it um, it needs to be playful and sporadic. It's not. It's also like the texture of the the bark of the tree. It's not just the shading. It's not just. And then when the tree, where the tree branches are, I'm going to kind of do like a little horseshoe shape around the base of the tree trunk, or the tree branches, sorry. It just pops them up. Oh, I missed a little branch on this guy. So I have a little branch coming this way, but I don't want him, you, you, you can do it either way, but for my personal painting, I'm going to have him kind of coming from the other side of the tree. I don't want him growing like these guys are, just to show a different way of doing it. So this guy, I did my line sort of right in front of him. And then, because he's growing from the opposite side of the tree, and then I'm gonna just go along the bottom with a little bit of the gray tone. And then pull it gently across, and feed it in. And it just kind of looks like we can't really see exactly where he's attached to the tree, but um, there he is. <laughs> Okay, so we got all of our gray tones in there, and we can move on to the black right away. I'm going to switch to my littler brush for the black because we're doing details. In case I'm right zoomed in, because I want to show you the details really carefully up close. So you'll need your black. You can pour some in your palette, or you can even just dip right from that if you want. We are using just straight black. And I'm dipping just the edge of my brush. See how much paint is on there? Barely, barely any. And these are brand new brushes, so it should make a nice, beautiful straight line. Um, if you get oops, like a little bit too much, you can always sharpen your brush again and dip a little bit in. Now, remember I said um, at the beginning of the, the tree trunks, we were talking about always pulling away from the angle of the brush. That's really important now because now we're getting into the details. I'm actually gonna outline the trees and I know that's not necessarily something you would see in real life, an outlined tree, but it's the style I love to do when I'm painting these trees because I really feel like they pop right up off the canvas when you do that. And I know the black can kind of be intimidating because everything else right now is really pale and pastel -y. But you'll see once you go black, it will really look awesome and really, really pop it. So just commit to it. You got this. You can see all the outlining I'm doing here. When it comes to the little branches, I'm just like gently outline them. They're gonna extend, so it's gonna be sort of the black tip of the branch that almost like fades in to the right. And see how this line here is a bit thicker than my other line? That's fine. Do not sweat over things like that. If your line isn't perfectly straight, that's okay. If it's thicker in some spots and thinner in others, that's okay. Don't stress over that. Sorry, I know sometimes I'm going off the frame. I'm just doing the base of the tree too. Just trying to zoom in for you so that you can see the lines. And then we'll just continue on. I'm doing my main tree first. If you prefer to start with some of your small ones, you could. That's fine, but make sure that when you're doing the small ones, they skip over. Remember this branch is in front, so your lines for your small guys have to skip over the branch. Right? Okay. 
I can't see how I almost like bow the other swing a bit here. Okay, maybe I'll make that into like a bow. There, now he's a little branch. You can have those little black branches kind of added in here and there too. Um, if you want to do it as a line and you feel like there's a spot that needs a new little black thinner branch, go for it. Or if you want to outline it all first and then add in branches, you can. See how this one kind of goes like in an L shape, goes out and then up. I feel like at this little break, break point, I could maybe have Even when it's a twig, it's going to be thicker and then get thinner as it goes out. I just quickly sharpened my brush there because when you're working with your smallest details, you want to make sure your brush is nice and sharp. Now, a lot of these little branches are going to get covered up with leaves, so don't go nuts with them. Just like a few kind of to guide you. And if you have a spot that's like, oh no, it's so, so thick. It's, I messed up, ah! Don't worry about it. We're gonna take the leaves and we're gonna put it on that spot. You got this, it's fine. That is the fun of painting with acrylics. You can easily, easily layer them and fix your mistakes. Or your whoopses for that little mistake, right? You can always, always fix when it comes to this little curve area at the base of the tree I always call it like an armpit <laughs> like the tree's armpit it's going to be wrinkly little wrinkly armpits in the trees and when you're using your brush you're, sort, you're going to pull away from your angle but you're also going to be curving your brush so that it keeps a thin line so I'm pulling away from the angle and curving to do a few little wrinkles and then it might even have a little bit of like shading. So now, now I don't have very much paint on my brush, so I'm just kind of adding a little bit of texture in. And we're gonna get going on that, and that's gonna like add detail to our tree really soon. So if you do your little armpit and you want to do that part of it, you can. Um, and maybe up here too, we'll add a little bit of wrinkles. I think it's okay for trees to have wrinkly armpit. I do it in a curved shape. Think about think about the shape of this branch, right? It's a cylinder shape. So you want those to reflect that shape. That's why we don't just go straight across it. So it doesn't it makes it feel flat and incorrect. So once you have the curved shape, it makes that that branch feel realistic and feel round. Notice that I'm sometimes going up and sometimes going down, but when I switch directions, I flip my brush. Oh, I don't know if you saw that in the frame. Sorry if you didn't. Um, so here I'm going down, and then here I'm going up, but notice I flipped my brush. Those big branches are going on top of the, like in the big tree, are going on top of branches. Now I'm getting narrower and narrower as they get away and 
they have darker as well on the bridge. So see right here, I kind of just made this little like indent, like a little whoop. That's okay, I don't really want it to do that. So I'm just gonna thicken it a bit and I might add a bit of black on it after. But back to Tan Stock itself as totally fixable. Might even just use it as a black after and kind of see what we do. Ooh, ooh, that's gonna be interesting. <laughs> there we go, all outlined. Okay. So next up is our texture of our brand, of our bark. There's a few things we're gonna do. So with this little brush, if you hold it right on the edge of the brush, you can do like the little lines, see? So that's one thing we have to do sporadically throughout. Not necessarily in this order, it doesn't really matter. You can do, I'm just gonna show you all the different things and you might just wanna play with it as you go. When you don't have a lot of paint on your brush, you just can you can also do like little swoops here and there. See how it makes this like dry brushing texture? You can go over your black or your gray area, that's fine. But you don't want to cover it all up, but some areas will have a little bit of gray base to them. And some will be some more gray showing. Sometimes you'll have like a bigger black patch. Don't stress about that it's realistic and it makes sense so I just dipped in the, the black that's why that bigger spot is there and that's okay I'm gonna use it I'm just gonna add like a little bit of detail around it to make it seem maybe like a knot so I'm just kind of throwing a little bit of smaller lines around it um, another really easy way to do like an eye of a tree I'll do one up here um, is almost like an eye shape like I'm just kind of dabbing my end of edge of my brush so that it makes sort of like a thicker center and it comes almost to a point on each side. And then you just do like a little swoop on the top and the bottom. Uh, like a cute little knot. So you just kind of want to dance with those things. So you've got like dry brushing a little bit here and there. Some spots that are a bit darker. Again, you can have a bit more dark on the one side than the other, but this is more bark texture than it is the way the light hits. So the black can be um, on both sides. And I like to think of these little lines, um, think of little clusters because you don't always want to have like a perfectly lined up like one here, now one inch later, one here and all the way down. Make sure that they're like sporadic little groupings and little clusters and the odd one on its own here and there is great too. But it, it's just key to make it kind of sporadic and then also the shapes and sizes can be different. Sometimes you might want to have a bit more of a line and sometimes you might want um, like a bit of a swoop but most of the time it's, it's very horizontal they just sometimes are a bit thicker and sometimes they're a bit thinner and um, sometimes they're a bit longer and I'm just kind of dance. Sometimes I don't even like pay attention to where I'm putting them and just kind of let them happen. I don't really plan them out. I really just work on letting the brush do the work and kind of try and zone into my art. I'm adding a little bit of the dry brushing along the bottom of this branch. That's going to help us with that shading and the shape of the branch. Starting at the bottom, pulling up and then adding a few of the little lines in here and there. Some spots might be a little bit darker. Some spots might be a little bit lighter. You can really see it coming together. So what you wanna do is all these techniques I've been showing you and playing with, you wanna to continue to do those on all of your trees. So have fun with that and just kind of fill them all.
Okay, so here is our trees, all textured up and outlined, and ready for leaves. Before you add your leaves, make sure the black is all the way dry. Either you use your hair dryer or take another little break, but you don't want to be adding yellow and bright green on top of black and having the black mix in. So give it a chance to dry first and you can get your dabber, your little baby dabber. Where's mine? Um, you can get him out as well as your yellow and green for the next step. All right, I got my little dabber and the yellow and the green. And you can add a little bit into your palette of each color if you have a little spot left on your palette. And you can also, um, while you're pouring paint, if you want to add the darker blue in there, you can, or you can wait and add that in a minute after we do our lighter tones. But anyway, let's, I think I'm just going to go ahead and add my blue well. take a minute to look at the original. Um, check out how there's clusters of the leaves. See, a really important thing is to leave like these little pockets of negative space of our cool background that we worked on so hard. Make sure you leave little pockets of, of that showing through. And then there's clusters where you don't see the background through too. So sort of a good balance of that is important. And then um, most of our little branches are covered. You can see them kind of coming through a bit, but they're mostly covered. And that's what's gonna make it feel realistic, like those little clusters, they're important, which is why I wanted to make note of that. If you wanna look at your step-by-step um, -step sheet, it has a printout as well of the final painting, so you can take a look there too. And I will show you now how to do them. Right, so with our little dabber, I'm dipping first into the green and a teeny tiny bit in the yellow, just a little bit. And I'm gonna start dabbing onto the canvas. Now, I'm dabbing, it, it makes circles when you dab, but you don't need it to always be a circle. So I'm always just playing in the greens and the yellows and then kind of layering the little dabs that it makes and sometimes using the edge you see that? Of the dapper to make um, more like little ovals or smaller dabs to give it a little bit more of a realistic feeling instead of just a bunch of circles. Although I also think a bunch of circles would make a really cool style and technique. So you could try it that way if you wanted. I debated while I was designing this project because I think it would also look cool to have all these little circles. Um, but then I decided that it um, to do it this way because it kind of makes it a bit more, um, have a little bit more perspective to have some smaller and some bigger. See, like when you dab, it just makes circles. Okay, so these dot, dots that I'm doing are random in shape and size and color. I'm using more yellow tones when I'm up at the top of the trees and then more green sort of in the middle. Look at these cute little pockets of negative space that I'm leaving. And then imagine like little branches kind of coming off of these branches, even though there isn't an actual like black branch there, it can have little pieces that come out from there. We just don't see where it's growing from and just make cute little clusters. And look at the interesting shapes that you can come up with while um, dabbing. Now remember, this big tree in the front is always on top of the trees at the back. So start with um, your kind of background leaves over here when you get to this side of the of the, the painting. You start with your smaller ones in the background because then you can layer on top easily and, um, and it'll just make it a little bit easier. Something really important to note is take steps back as you're doing the leaves because 
you may see a spot where you need to add or you might see a spot that you know you need to add some blue or some yellow or edit it or you may just love it the way it is because knowing when to stop is so important and it's one of the trickiest things when you're doing art is just knowing when enough is enough and when your art is perfect as is. So lots of yellow tones up closer to the tops of your branches and they get to be a bit more green from the middle. We'll add the blues in. The blues are going to hit more on like the bottoms but still you're dancing them around and making sort of organic shapes and patterns because you don't want um, the blue or the sorry I'm talking about the colors so the color is going to also make those organic shapes because you don't want the blue to just be like right along the bottom of each part and you don't want the yellow to be just on the tops but the yellow is the, the sunlight reflecting off the leaves and the blue is the shadow that the leaves are casting so it's important that they're sort of in those positions but the way that the wind blows the leaves will always change where those shadows are hitting and where the light is shining and so on. So there's rules, but rules are supposed to be played with and broken in art. So sort of just guidelines and then you can learn from it from there and interpret it how you see fit. So you can see me layering and layering and layering, adding lots of yellows and greens. The reason I didn't get into my blue yet is just because um, I sort of like to make the shapes um, of my little clusters with the light colors. And then you can just add the blue in afterwards super easily. I find darker, darker colors always just take over the scene. So. It's easier to add them in a bit later than sort of try and cover them up with lighters if you need to. I'm going around that guy, but maybe this guy, this branch actually has leaves on him, so maybe we kind of don't see what happens in there anyway. Could do it, do it like that. And then I'm just kind of adding to this guy. And see how they just build and they start looking super cute. And this little guy down here, he needs some. Don't forget to make sure you leave some of your branches showing through here and there. You don't want to completely cover it. But um, you can cover a lot of the little branches. You don't have to have a ton of them showing through. Kind of just play with the idea of a bit of both showing and see what comes out of it. Wrap them around the top of the canvas if you want. Da, 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 da. And then once you're happy with um, sort of where your position of your leaves are, then you can start adding in a little bit of blue. So I've got some green and some blue, and I think I even dipped in the yellow. And I'm just gonna start playing with the blue amongst those clusters where like the bottoms of the leaves might be but I'm just kind of gently tapping it and playing with it and it's gonna blend in on our brush it's gonna blend in on the canvas you'll have some spots that are more blue than others and more shadowy looking that is cool that's kind of what we want you can see all those blues in there a little bit here and a little bit there and just let it dab dance and I just dipped in the yellow again too because I wanted to add a little highlighting in here so once you get into your blue you still can go back to your yellow it will never be like as pure as it was before you got into your blue but that's okay it's just gonna make other green tones in there I'm kind of dabbing and dabbing and twisting a little bit at the same time. I'm sorry, I kind of forgot what I was doing with that. Just 
Doesn't this just make you want to go for a walk in the woods on this beautiful sunny spring day? Ugh. That is what I want to do right now. Well, not quite right now, because right now I'm making it, but soon. Soon I will. Get my dogs on a hike. It's so important to be in touch with nature. I'm just coming close to this branch here. I'm trying not to overlap it. You can always go back and get your brush and cover them up if the green comes into it a bit and you need to. That is not a problem. I think I'm gonna add a couple on this guy over here. Maybe just like wrap them around the edge a bit. And you're your branches like this little leaf isn't really attached to anything that's okay they don't have to be like here's my branch so i have to have a leaf there it doesn't have to be like that it's just like a playful organic feeling just dance your brush around let the leaves kind of come out and happen think of other little branches that might be in there and just dab your dabber dance your dabber and layer and play and have fun with it I am stopping. So now we have two of these awesome tree projects. You can see they're not the same and that's okay. That's what art's all about. If I wanted it the same, I could head to the photocopier, <laughs> but I didn't because I did it by hand and so did you. And I bet yours turned out awesome too. And I would love to see them. If you wanna comment them under this video, that would be amazing. Or you can send them to me on any other social media platform. I'd love to check them out. Thank you so much for painting today with me. Make sure you like this video, subscribe to the channel, please. And um, I can't wait to paint with you again and show you what next month's subscription project is all about. We'll see you then. Bye.